All right, so before I even start this video, you all know I'm not a huge safety Nazi, but uh, this is not a how-to video, and if you want to do what I'm doing in this video, do it at your own risk because, again, this is not a how-to video. So, with that being said, this is my bootleg cymbal lathe. This is not very proper and probably not the safest, but it's a direct drive setup, so I got the motor, very underpowered motor, uh, attached with a collar, to uh, this wooden disc, and then the symbol attaches to that. And then the tool rest is just some scrap two by fours. I have this other piece right here that I need to attach here uh, to get the right height. So again, this is not at all proper. I'm just kind of doing this as a one-time thing. I totally could, you know, build a, pro a, a proper symbol lathe, but I just don't have the time. I don't want to spend the money on it. Also, this motor is way underpowered and uh, I could use this one. This is the one off of my jointer. I bought this the other day for 60 bucks and this would be a much better uh, motor to use but I don't feel like taking it off right now. I'd also have to remake everything because that's a 3 8 inch shaft while this one is just a half inch shaft. But if I was to do this proper, I would probably use a motor like that size, at least of that size, and you know, gear it down to uh, you know, spin slow. Also, I have a, uh, a variac or a variable speed transformer, I think is the right word. But uh, this costs 20 bucks at Harbor Freight. Uh, I have a feeling it's gonna blow out or at least blow a fuse, so we'll see if that happens. You can also see that the backing plate is not very big. This is a 14 inch symbol, it's a hi hat top, and then the bottom is over there, if it'll focus. Yeah. So I just cobbled this together just to try this out and, you know, have some fun. So I don't really know much about modifying symbols, but from the research I've done, I know that it's easier to work with uh, B8 symbols. So let me show you why with these examples. So here is a symbol made with B8 bronze, and we can see that whatever hit the symbol, uh, it hit the symbol and went through the symbol, obviously. But you can see that it basically just peeled the bronze back. You can also see how it bent through here and created these little dimples. And then here is a failed industrial art project. It's a, it's a clock, if you couldn't tell. But this is a B20 symbol, and if you look at the back, you can see that it's basically a clean exit hole. So whatever it was, hit the symbol, went straight through, shattered the little pieces, and made a clean, clean hole. And for those that were wondering, yes. All right, enough rambling, let's actually do something now. All right, so usually when I go into the voiceover mode, I will like explain what I'm doing and like the thought behind what I'm doing, but uh, I really don't know what I'm doing here. I'm kind of lathing the symbol and uh, there's really nothing else to say. But you did just see me squirt on some WD-40 and I've watched a whole bunch of, you know, symbol lathing videos. And no one ever seems to use any sort of lubrication, but uh, this is a really cheap tool bit, so I figured I might as well do it and try to keep it as cool as I can. You'll also notice that even with the variable speed control that this thing is spinning way too fast, and like I said before, this thing is way underpowered so there's like no torque whatsoever. So I will cut a little bit, stop, let it spin up to speed, cut a little bit, Stop, let it spin up the speed, so on and so on. And then here I was trying to figure out the best, you know, angle for the tool to cut. And uh, it took a little bit to figure out, but once you got it, it's basically just muscle memory. So some of you guys might be saying, oh, you're pushing too hard on the tool or, oh, your tool's dull because it's smoking, but actually that's the, uh, the WD-40 vaporizing, so yeah.
All right, so now the hammering. To be honest, I really don't know anything about, you know, tonal hammering. So I got to give a big thank you and shout out to Lance Campo. He kind of gave me like a uh, like a general guideline of how to hammer a symbol and like where to hammer it. So uh, I'll leave a link to his channel. And again, Lance, thank you. So basically what he told me to, you know, trash up a symbol is to hammer uh, more densely towards the bell. And then as you go farther out towards the edge of the symbol, kind of do it more, you know, randomly, more sparsely. But you all know me, uh, I kind of just did my own thing and experimented a bit, so uh, we'll see how it sounds. So I didn't record all the hammering, so you just see me going ham with the, uh, the ball peen hammer. But I did use the other end of this hammer as well as another ball peen hammer that I have. I used the... The, uh, like the flat side, but I rounded that side over and I use that along the edge of the symbol. And here they are after the hammering. Like I said, I probably went a little too crazy with the ball peen. Uh, at the time I thought it looked kind of cool, but now that I'm seeing them in this picture, they kind of look pretty ugly. But uh, this is my first time doing this, so give me a break. Also, I let these symbols sit for like 10 days because everything I read online said that after you, you know, rework a symbol, you need to let them sit and let the molecules realign or something like that. So I let them sit for 10 days, so hopefully the molecules have, you know, found their new homes. But also now that I've let them sit, they, uh, they look like brass symbols, so, you know, it's not the end of the world, but personally, I don't like that look, so I'll figure something out eventually. But now, let's see how they sound. There we go. So yeah, they definitely sound different. I don't really know what else you would expect, but uh, whether you like them before or after is totally up to you. Uh, personally, I think they sound better. Uh, I wouldn't say they're my, my favorite sound, but they're definitely more trashy, a little bit more dull, while before they're kind of bright and, and zingy is the best way to describe it, I guess. Is that tripod in the shot? But like I said, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this before. So for my first time, I think they came out all right, I guess. Uh, so I'm curious to know whether you liked them now or before. So definitely let me know in the comments. Also, I bought these hi-hats for another project. So before I do that, I figured I'll do this. So you'll see these hi-hats again in a future video, actually two future videos. So be on the lookout for that. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.